I wanted to show that you can make impossible things with renewable energies, with clean technologies, with energy efficient devices. And I think this is what we need to do in, in our world in general. This airplane is just a symbol, and I wanted a powerful symbol to improve quality of life. I'm Bertrand Picard, initiator of Solar Impulse. When I had this idea of an airplane flying perpetually without fuel, the specialist said it was impossible, and the non-specialist did not know it was impossible, so they accepted to help us. I went to the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, the MIT of Switzerland. The chief of research told me, wow, that's really interesting. Let's make a feasibility study. And he had the good idea to ask André to lead that feasibility study, because André, as an engineer and entrepreneur, and jet fighter pilot had all the qualities to really understand what was needed. The feasibility study I did with all these scientists of, uh, of this uh, institute came to the conclusion that we thought it is possible to fly around the world with a solar powered airplane. With the first airplane, we had to demonstrate it feasible. I flew 26 hours, this so was the first time ever that a solar powered airplane can fly day and night. With this, we needed an airplane which can fly over the ocean almost indefinitely. The challenge was that we had to build something which was never built. You know, the airplane of a size of a 747 with the weight of a light car. When André took the lead of making the technical team, who accepted to build the big pieces in carbon fiber? It's a shipyard. It's not an airplane factory. And this is a big lesson because it shows that the specialist know exactly how to implement what they have learned, but it's difficult for them to go into the unknown. It's a single pilot aircraft, so you have to find ways to rest, you have to trust the airplane, you have to fall asleep, you have to be able to wake up in case there is a need, an alarm, a trouble, pretty fast, focused on what is essential. Solar Impulse is really the result of the tradition of exploration of my family. My grandfather was the first man in the stratosphere, so he was the first one to see the curvature of the Earth with his own eyes. That was a way to show that we could fly with less fuel, more efficiency above the bad weather. My father made the dive to the deepest spot in the ocean, 11 kilometers down in the Marina Trench, to show that there was life in the deepest trenches. Each time it was a combination of scientific adventure and protection of the environment. So for me, what I tried to do was to have an inner compass showing the unknown, what was still to discover. So the first time I saw a hang glider, one of the first one in Europe, I said, that's for me. I became hang glider pilot. And then I pushed quite far with aerobatic flying, with high altitude, starting my flights, jumping from hot air balloons, which means that I started to meet the world of ballooning. And I was invited to make the first transatlantic balloon race. I was not yet a balloonist, but I said, yes, of course, I want to try that. So I trained to become a balloon pilot. And uh, we won that race with my colleague. So I thought, OK, what next can we do? and there was the dream of flying around the world. So I launched the project to fly around the world. I failed twice, but I thought, that's the direction in which I want to go. And you know, around the world, in the balloon, it's 20 days of flight nonstop. And every day I was afraid to fall short of fuel because I had to burn propane, liquid propane, to hit the envelope. And every day the level was lower. And I was thinking, how could I imagine to fly forever with no fuel? And this is how Solar Impulse was born. It's true that a lot of people don't pursue their dreams because they're afraid of failing. I understood that I have to do things for what I want, for the direction I have set, for the goals I've put. And if people laugh, OK, it's their problem. Because I also understood that the people who laugh the most are the people who don't dare to try anything new. It's never stop, never settle. That's really the, the philosophy of explorers. You know, there is a lot of cross-feeding between us. André taught me how to be a better pilot. I taught him how to be a better explorer. 
and uh, we will end up with a lot more skills than we had before because we are two and we could help each other and support each other. We talked a, a little bit about you know the experience I had and an experimental airplane is is not something which has been verified for a long time. So in fact, each flight is a discovery. When I uh, left Japan, I knew that I had to fly five days, five nights to get to uh, Hawaii. One of the important equipment did not work. That's what I call the virtual copilot, which alarms me if there is something wrong in the airplane when I sleep. It was really a, a, a trauma at the moment, and I think it took us the last six months to rebuild the confidence, rebuild our mutual understanding so that we can proceed now for the second part of the flight. As soon as we have the right weather to be able to reach the west coast of the United States, we'll, uh, we'll leave. So we have already now an airplane which is ready to go with the amount of energy, maybe lower than what we need, but with the right energy, solar energy. The right weather for us is that we get a situation where every morning we have enough sun to start to recharge the batteries. We are at the limit, but we have the ocean underneath, so we better have sun at this moment. This is important. That's the motto of the project. Future is clean, run the world with clean technologies. And we are now bringing together a group of more than 420 associations, NGOs, organizations who are involved in clean technologies and renewable energy, and they are members of Future is Clean. You cannot fight against growth. You cannot fight against economical development to protect the environment. It, it makes no sense. People will never follow you. But you can give clean, efficient, and profitable solutions. And then you will gather people who will say, ah, there is something good to make and to take out of fighting climate change. These are the technologies of the future, and you have to use them now, already today, if you want to be a pioneer, if you want to be successful.